Right, for more on this, join now by Corruption Watch senior researcher Malusi Ngala. First, Source Money's Reg Ngosi and uh, the Organization on Doing Tax Abuse Executive Director, uh, Advocate Stephanie Fick. Good to have you all and thank you very much uh, for uh, your time and, and coming on uh, this evening. The sub accused of engaging in a systemic cover-up. How did we get here? I mean... Up until this point, this institution has been able, for example, one would say, to resist pressure on, 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 on the ownership uh, of the bank from politicians. It's been able to, to resist pressure from politicians on the instruments that it uses as far as the uh, monetary policy is concerned and so forth. Uh, uh, and, and on many other scores, investigations that would have been done by the FIC and, and so on. But how do we get to a point where the credibility of the sub, at least its independence, is now being questioned by the likes of you, Mr. Nkosi. Well, firstly, I do not know whether the credibility of the sub has ever been there. It has been there for those who have no clear understanding of uh, the operations of the Reserve Bank. For those of us who are in the know, the Reserve Bank had no credibility, hasn't got any credibility at all. And this is just a mere extension of that lack of credibility. Because uh, monetary policy, as it stands, shouldn't be conducted in the manner the Reserve Bank is conducted. And in fact, this particular parapara matter, in our view, is pretty slippery. And the way they use the entitled or entitlement, that particular phrase in the Regulation 6, subsection 1, is pretty tricky. I think taken in totality, I think the sub's um, position is likely to be challenged by um, other authorities or in, indeed the court or those who may wish to challenge it. So credibility of the Reserve Bank, independence of the Reserve, those are issues that we know are not valid. They're not independent. They've never been independent <laughs> in our view. They may claim to be independent of politics, but they're not independent of other pressures outside of the country inside of the country. So, yeah. so it's expanding that because there's, indep there's independence, legal independence in terms of what the Constitution says uh, the, the sub should be, uh, and there's independence in practice. What's the difference there? Well, any state institution is supposed to be independent. That's the very independence that the Reserve Bank enjoys. All of them are independent. But here we're talking about um, operational independence, that it should operate naturally independent of any pressures. But we know that's not the case. It's not just for the South African Reserve Bank. There's been virtually all reserve banks. Yeah. They either have pressure from the, the, the markets or pressure from politicians, and they choose which one suits them at whatever point in time. <laughs> so the independence, quite frankly, shouldn't be the one that should be guiding us here. Yeah. I forget, Fick, uh, there's never been credibility at the sub. It's not really independent. There's always some players who are influencing decisions that are coming uh, from the sub. What's your view? My view is that I think from from civil society point of view is that we are struggling with political interference in so many um, government departments. Um, it is it is literally everywhere. And all I can shout from the rooftops is that, you know, independence is extremely important, but so is accountability. And that we need, you know, if we look into the future, we need um, objectivity, we need transparency, transparency in order to curb corruption, which is an illness in our society and our bringing so much damage to, um, you know, uh, 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 the people of, of South Africa. To come back to the Paula Paula instance, for example, now one can question whether the Reserve Bank really wanted to restrict its mandate in this um, specific instance. I think, you know, talking about uh, politics is also a bit depressing. <laughs> always because um, you know everything is politicized the political parties is is fighting for survival there's a there's an election coming next year and I think you know the people are at the at the the tail end of of all these fights I just think that sometimes our priorities are a bit skewed um, and that 
although this investigation is important and, you know, if the president is guilty of crimes, he should be prosecuted. Um, but I do think that sometimes our priorities is, is, is not what it should be. Yeah, Mr. Nala, the sub saying, well, we as the executive did not I interfere with this investigation. Our investigators were given the resources. They were allowed to uh, investigate, go to the facts, go in depth. So they acted impartially and they acted uh, with integrity. Yet the sub still being accused of a, a cover-up. How do we assess the role of the bank in this particular uh, uh, matter in order to determine its independence or its lack thereof? Please, please unmute for us there. Uh, um, evening, Tabo, and uh, to your viewers as well. Um, I don't think we should underplay the Palapala matter. Um, in terms of its enormity, we are a country that uh, that is dealing with rampant corruption um, in various forms, institutional. It's quite systemic, and at the centre of these corruption scandals, often are politicians. And um, we can rightly co um, point the finger at the African National Congress who are currently in power, who've been implicated time and time again in uh, corrupt and corrupt activities. So with that being the case, um, uh, we need transparency. And the transparency does not have to be a mere ticking box exercise where we are issued a statement simply telling us. In our instance as a country where people are so distrustful uh, politicians, um, the executive, the presidency in particular, people want our politicians to go the extra mile. They want our officials to go to extra mile, especially officials in um, the financial sector or like the South African Reserve Bank and the governor himself. So um, the best way um, that we can actually determine the independence of, of the bank is to understand its logic. Um, it's an it's um, investigative process to see how it actually reached the decision that it did um, in this particular matter. We, we had that opportunity with uh, the acting public protector, uh, even though, you know, those findings um, are subject to be reviewed. And we also had that opportunity with the panel 89 um, committee. So um, for all intents and purposes, it's actually almost laughable that we find ourselves in a in situation where we have to guess as to what logic the Reserve Bank used to, to get to this current finding in a, in a country where we now know that transparency is of paramount importance. Yeah. Well, uh, w what do we do when the Reserve Bank says to us, well, if, if, I, if I were to disclose uh, information that is in the possession of the Reserve Bank, it would be a, a criminal offence. Uh, so the only way that you can get this information is, is, is uh, via, I suppose, a court of law at this particular point. Well, that's, that, that's what some of the, um, I believe some of the uh, parties involved or have an interest in this matter um, have submitted prior requests. I don't know to what end that will happen, but no doubt you know, it's going to be a, protect, a protracted affair um, because it's a highly political, contentious issue. Um, and we'll just have to wait, whether it's a year or so, to actually get to the bottom of this particular issue. In the meantime, then we we'll have to wait for other institutions to come up with findings. I mean, it's pretty, just play this scenario back to 10 years ago. Um, you know, uh, similarly, the country, everybody knew that what politicians do and some officials is that they use the courts to stall processes, hoping that the situation will evolve. And that's what the ANC actually did in last year's December um, vote in Parliament prior to the, um, the electoral um, conference. You know, they stalled knowing very well that they'd be playing the long political game. That the uh, South African Reserve Bank was in Parliament grilled uh, by uh, lawmakers uh, today. They accuse uh, the sub of a cover-up. This is on the Palapala. Pala.
uh, matter and some of the answers there that were given by the Reserve Bank Governor. To help us in the conversation, Reg Nkosi, Advocate Stephanie Fick, as well as Malusi Nala, still with us. So, Nkosi, uh, you, you might have missed the question, maybe because we had a little bit of an interruption, but what I asked Malusi earlier on is, what criteria can be used to, to measure the credibility or lack thereof in this particular decision? Because others would say, how, how do you measure, how do you assess, for example, the credibility of, of, of the bank is to assess the role the bank has played in history in, a, in enforcing the exchange control regulation. So do you have a history of how the bank has done this in the past uh, for us to be able to say, well, you are now deviating from what you've done in the past? It's rather difficult to have uh, precedence uh, in this regard. The, the issues differ quite fundamentally. If the Reserve Bank is dealing with a person like you and me, it, it would exercise its independence, I suppose. Uh, if it is dealing with a um, public figure, it will have to exercise its independence with caution. Because remember, the president appoints, or the ANC and the president, they appoint the the governor and all those deputy governors, these are political appointees. To the extent that they are, the, the president is their master. And therefore, they are likely to, to, to be very cautious when it comes to all these issues. So even if there was a case prior to this that talked to the independence of the Reserve Bank, you can't measure that independence with this particular matter. This is a far sensitive issue than would be uh, any other issue that doesn't involve a head of state and stuff like that. So... You know, precedence wouldn't teach us anything here uh, unless there was a, another issue pertaining to a, another president, say, for example, President Mandela, President Zuma, and so on. But here, it's a completely different board, board, board game altogether. However, to us, the independence of the Reserve Bank has always been in question. Uh, the conduct of its money policy, as I said earlier on, is to us um, quite questionable. Um, and And... I, I would therefore think that uh, measuring it would depend, quite frankly, on the issue at hand. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. when it comes to exchange control, again, as I said, rather difficult. It, it's, it's rather, it, is, it, is, it, it is ready to, to prove empirically right now that, for example, what you're saying, the Saab is acting because it is beholden uh, to the president, or at least the Reserve Bank governor is beholden to the president because... Um, he might get fired. Look, we, we know presidents previously have fired the Reserve Bank governor, uh, but, but how, how, how do we pin that to this president to say, well, you, you are likely to get fired if you had uh, adverse finding on Palapa? Well, it's very difficult, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> it's rather uh, tough for one have to, having to pin that to this uh, particular president. But broadly speaking, reserve banks are generally right across the world not independent at all. That we have come to establish not just here, right across. They either have to bend towards a particular pressure that is uh, mounted against them. Uh, in this instance, in my view, uh, having had a look, uh, had a regard to the issues, I think they, 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 they were hiding behind a very tiny um, element of that regulation. The, uh, what is called entitlement. So, yeah, well, going forward, I do not know how South Africans have to take this, but uh, it's challengeable in, yeah. in, in courts, in my view. It's quite challengeable. What are you saying there, Mr. Nkos? Are, are you saying this, this thing of a perfected transaction is it's a, it's a dreamed-up concept? They, they are, they're coming up with it now just to, to kind of try and, and, and make sense of this, of this finding of theirs, or is it something that has always been there? No, it's, it's there. I think it's part of the regulations, but I'm saying you cannot use a particular phrase and hide behind it. The issue should be taken in its totality, not simply relying on a particular phrase that happens to be there. And lawyers are quite, you know, capable. But again, you'll find some other lawyers saying, well, no, 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 but look, hold on a second. Go beyond this particular issue and take the matter as it stands, as a whole. Having to rely on a phrase like entitlement or entitled to uh, is quite pretty, is tr it's pretty tricky uh, for, for the Reserve Bank. I think the Reserve Bank is likely to regret you know, if this issue is taken up, um, on review. And uh, I, I wonder if 
they will be able to, 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 to survive it. Advocate Frick, exchange control regulations generally applying to uh, independent citizens like myself, but maybe not so much uh, to somebody in power. How, how, how do we establish a, a system of accountability there? How do we assess the role uh, of, of, of the bank in enforcing those exchange control regulations on everyone equally? Yeah, one do get the impression that sometimes, you know, some, the rules are, are there and, 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 and to, it depends on the person that it, uh, that it applies to. And that, again, you know, it's a whole society that is, you know, the rules apply to them and then there's problems. And may I just say, I mean, um, we, we are supposed to move on from, from state capture, but if you just think about the state capture years, um, and the amount of money that just left South Africa, and I'm not saying that that responsibility solely lie with the Reserve Bank, but, um, you know, if you talk about money laundering um, and, and all of that, we do have a problem with with, with money laundering and, um, you know, coming in and coming out, exchange controls, etc. So, again, the priorities is that we, we really, this is a serious issue and that it should be treated with the seriousness it, it deserves. But how do you enforce accountability? And I think we are all agree that we do have a transparency problem. And this whole thing about you know, if if we say something, um, it, it, you know, there's going to be problems and we, we, we can't say, you know, give all the facts. We've seen this a lot. And I think um, part of, again, if we want to look back at, at state capture, was the lack of transparency. And, you know, if you don't have something, um, the question always pops into my head is if you don't have something to hide, why not be transparent? Plus, we have the recent um, judgment, um, you know, where SAR said that there's certain things that they do not want to make make uh, public, and, and 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 we know that there is legislation specifically stating that. And then the court has said, and I think the court agreed that we, in society, in order for us to move forward, in order for us to ensure accountability, in order for us to start making. Um, you know, in roads into corruption, that we need transparency. I mean, if you just listen to some of the question, uh, answers we get from departments when you do um, give them pious, um, I mean, quite frankly, quite recently, um, it's, you know, why do you want it? The fact that uh, it, uh, you may want the information doesn't mean it is in public interest. Of course it's in public interest. What you do, what you do with state funds, what you do in, in general is of a public, uh, the public's concern. And you just have to look at our history in, in, in terms of the, the corruption and, you know, just the sheer step that happened, um, that of course it's important. So to come back to your, to your question is that we need to turn this ship around about transparency and that, um, you know, People need to be invited in, I want to say, so that we can, we can see and hold you to account. Um, because that is our way of, of making sure that you, you know, what you preach is what you're actually doing. Maybe there is also, Advocate Fick, a broader question around our financial surveillance. And, and you would know this because, for example, you were following this, you know, dairy farm matter and, and following that money has, has, has been quite a complex thing. Uh, uh, to know where it went and, and how it, it slipped through the cracks, which means there is a degree of weakness in our financial surveillance apparatus. We, 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 we've got the grey listing as one of the examples that tells us that something is wrong then and, and something needs to be fixed. Of course. And, and, and again, uh, um, you know, if you look at state capture and the way that money was transferred from one bank account to another, it's classic money laundering. And, 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 and I do think that even currently in the ID, NPA, investigating these, I want to say complicated, although I think it's quite simple in its, in, in, in its, in its complicatedness, if that makes sense, um, is that we do not have the necessary skills. And I also think that we lack a little bit of intelligence. And I'm not talking about the, the dangerous intelligence. I'm talking about, you know, in the police being able to identify trends, um, being able to identify 
what type of money laundering is currently being used in order to put a stop to it. And then also, that is not now more proactive, but also being able to reactively look at and, and, and go search for those crimes. Now, how many that forfeiture cases have we really seen? How many prosecutions have we really seen? And, you know, are we ever going to get our money back? And I think part of the answer is probably not because, you know, the NPA was a victim of state capture. The police are a victim of state capture. I don't think the police has really recovered. Um, but it is high time yeah. that we again build that capacity. Um, I refuse to believe that in South Africa there's not capacity. There's not, um, you know, young capacity that wants to become involved in order to make a difference and in order, you know, to put the people behind bars. But yeah. again, yeah. we don't have the political will to solve this. Ain't going to happen. Well, see, the last time I spoke to you, uh, well, I mean, we speak on, on a number of matters, but I, I, one I, di I distinctly remember is how you, as Corrupt Corruption Watch, came up with a tool, for example, that is able to determine political influence on local government appointments and how, uh, uh, for example, money was, was being exchanged and patronage and, and so on and, and so forth. Are we able to do that in this particular instant in such a way that we don't fall into a trap because of course it's elections 2024 is around the corner where opposition parties themselves right now are seeking to influence the decision of the sub to 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 suit their own political fate um um, I think the tool that you are referring to, Tabo, has got to do with procurement, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Um, which, is something that, yeah, which is something that my colleagues are working, um, constantly working on to do with transparency and decentralization of uh, the tender procurement process, especially in, in relation to provincial and national um, money that is spent for infrastructure and so on and so forth. So. There, there's analytics about that, and, and people can actually visit our website to go look at, to have a look at that particular tool and just find information on that. Um, I don't think politicians, especially the oppositions, um, the, they need to play their role, and um, we can call it the political game. You know, of course that um, they are bound to amp up the volume. Um, given that, you know, it's election season and um, everybody's trying to gain political mileage. And the Palapala scandal is the perfect thing. Um, hence, um, perhaps, you know, the ANC was, was supposed to apply a little bit more wisdom instead of political trickery when this matter came up. You know, when, when it was rumored that the president wanted to um, step aside so that he, uh, the matter can be ventilated properly, um, during his own private time, maybe that would have been something f uh, for, for the party to consider. But nevertheless, we find ourselves where we are. And um, we should be aware as the public that we don't necessarily play into narratives that op um, opponents of the, of the president will be talking about. But it's, it's also about just listening to the evidence or looking at the evidence that's publicly available. Hence, it's quite important um, uh, and it's in the public interest that the South African Reserve Bank actually um, releases that report um, and that we get to know the context thereof so that we can actually talk about it and have these conversations, you and I and also the experts, the lawyers amongst us, so that we can know what uh, proper course of way that um, can we take as a society going forward. Because as things stand, you know, we don't know what um, we don't know what to think beyond what the the SARB has said in its statement. Yeah, we don't know what to think beyond what is said in the statement, Mr. Kosi. Quick thirty seconds, as I, I need to wrap up. But should we be thinking we are in the presence of an unhealthy financial system? Suppose that's what you suggest. The financial system has been unhealthy for quite a while. In fact, uh, the South African one, though resilient, it is in fact uh, uh, quite uh, problematic. We've seen uh, such problems within the, the, the banking sector and uh, even beyond the, the, the banking sector in shadow banking as well. 
we see the financial system not very, very strong. However, from the South African perspective, I suppose it would be referred to as, as good enough. But generally, I think uh, the financial system in this country requires a lot of retooling. In my view, uh, we need to substantially change the manner in which our financial system is uh, organized. It doesn't benefit the society as a whole. It benefits quite a few, and it continues to do that. South Africa has to work up and say, well, look, uh, you know, outside of us, countries like Japan, Germany, Asian, Asian countries outside of Japan, the way the banking systems there work is fundamentally different from the one we have here. Why? It's because this one is, in a way, neocolonial by its design, and it continues to favor that. Therefore, stability, of course, may be there. But I think it's not stable in the sense that doesn't benefit the majority of South Africans. Quite frankly, it requires fundamental change in my view. Appreciate you all. Thank you very much uh, for coming on. Uh, that is um, uh, Corruption Watch uh, Senior Researcher Malusi Nala, First Source Money's Reggie Nkosi, and Organization Are Doing Tax Abuse Executive Director Advocate Stephanie Fick. We asked you the question, what must happen now that the independence of the sub has been brought to question? Here's what you're saying on 072-110-5584. W. In, in Roy Fontaine, all professionals at these institutions like the sub, uh, SARS, and the uh, Public Protector Office value their professional independence and will not want to sacrifice that. Professionals have seen what has happened in institutions like ESCOM, the NPA, etc. Nkoban is currently paying a price for not following the law. This is a double-edged sword for professionals and they will follow the law rather than be called incompetent by judges. Kosama in Rabi Rich, Leseja must go on pension before he collapses the Reserve Bank. He's being very rational about this Palapala saga. Appreciate uh, your contributions. Right, we may continue in a moment. More news after this. Stay with us.